Michigan laid out some big news in their approach for the Michigan quarterback position to start the 2022 season. In this video, we will be covering the following. Number one, we'll cover the announcement from the Michigan football program. Number two, I'll give my thoughts on this approach and the announcement itself. Number three, I'll talk about the key factors that will ultimately decide the winner of the QB position battle. Number four, I'll talk about my mustache, or lack thereof. There were a few comments on the last video about my mustache. Some good, mostly bad. Yes, it's gone now. I didn't talk about it in the last video, got called out for it. So I will address it, and all stash-related comments will be at the end of this video if you're so inclined to check that out. If you missed parts one and two of this series, check those out in the description below. In part one, I covered the case for Kay McNamara to start. In part two, I covered the case for J.J. McCarthy to start. So check those out before we dive in here. So first, let's cover the announcement that Michigan made here. I'll throw it up on the screen. Pause if you want to read the whole thing. I'll give the cliff notes here. Week one, Kay McNamara is starting against Colorado State. Week two, against Hawaii, J.J. McCarthy will get the start. Week three and beyond, who the hell knows? Okay, an important additional note here. Jim Harbaugh said on Monday that both quarterbacks will play in both games. So even though that McNamara starting week one, expect to see J.J. McCarthy similar for week two, just because J.J. McCarthy is starting does not mean we will not see Cade McNamara in some capacity in that game. So my thoughts in the announcement here, if it's any other position on the field here, an announcement doesn't even really need to be made, right? There's rotation amongst other positions, battling for a starting role. That just happens as part of football. When you have two capable guys at a position, a rotation can greatly benefit the team. And I know running back is usually by committee, whereas maybe the quarterback position is not. But having both Corum and Edwards in this Michigan football team for 2022 season is a huge benefit to this team. Having McCarthy and McNamara is a huge benefit to the team. It makes sense to explore that and see how they actually will perform. Now that there is an announcement, the team and everyone can focus on the prep of each week, right? You know the situation. Players know who to expect at the at the quarterback position to start for each of these games. Now it's time to prep for the opponent, right? A big benefit I see from this is the ability to see how each quarterback prepares for the games going into them, right? Does it differ if they know that they're starting versus not starting? How will they behave in the week leading up to the game? What kind of leadership or what kind of differences would you see between week one and week two for both of those quarterbacks? It's something that now the staff can take a look at and analyze to say, okay, is this how we want this quarterback to be behaving moving on from week three and beyond here? This move really shows me that the staff appreciates both quarterbacks and the strides that they have made this offseason. Rewarding them both with a chance here to win the position outright kind of shows that, right? They've done everything they've asked, and now it's just a matter of who can go out and perform the job better. So remember in 2020 when Joe Milton won the quarterback job for the Michigan Wolverines, he was supposedly an insanely proficient practice quarterback. It simply did not translate when it came to game time on Saturdays. This is the staff learning from that experience to me. The guy you saw on Saturdays may not be what you saw throughout the offseason, throughout the week of practice leading up to that game. Now, I think both quarterbacks in this situation are extremely capable in ways that Joe Milton was not. But my point is that the best way to learn about who you have and what they can produce on the field is real reps against real teams and rip through the film of each of those quarterbacks in that situation. Anyone who sees any sort of negative with this situation to me is either number one, trolling, or number two, not focusing on the right things here. What I mean by number two here, I won't name names, but it was mentioned that this could create drama in the locker room or provides a lack of leadership. Being named a captain like Kate McNamara was doesn't mean you have to start, right? That's the player's decision to say this person is a leader in our locker room and he is a captain to me. It's a player decision there. So there's a correlation usually between a starter and a captain, but not always, right? What if someone gets injured? Ronnie Bell last year. You can still be a leader in the locker room even if you're not on the field, and that can carry forward into this battle as well. People who are getting spot snaps like the backup quarterback could also be a leader in the locker room. If there's drama in the locker room over a position battle that your team cannot handle or it distracts you from preparation for an upcoming opponent, I'm sorry, but that team isn't going to win shit for that year, right? Competition happens. It should be pervasive throughout the season. Best man should win, and that's how champions are made, and that's how starters are decided. That's how everything works. So if this is going to distract anyone, then that it, it isn't a team that's going to win anything. Part three here. So key factors that will ultimately decide on who will win this battle. If I had to break down one thing, and one thing only, it's this. Which quarterback is putting the offense in the best position to be successful on each and every down. 
It's vague as hell, I know, right? But let me elaborate here. Some things are out of the quarterback's control on a given drive. A wide receiver drops a ball on third down. Running back on first down, makes a bad cut, gets a loss for two yards, and now your def- your offense is behind and on second and 12. Things like that where quarterback did everything they were asked to do, it just other players didn't make a play, right? You cannot punish a quarterback for that, and they're... Therefore, you can't go by stats alone. There are things outside of the control of the quarterback that simply can't be considered as a part of that. There are specifics to each quarterback that I specifically will be looking at and probably doing analysis of when I'm kind of looking at, okay, who is going to be the better quarterback for the Michigan Wolverines this season? For J.J. McCarthy here, number one, how is he getting through his read progressions, especially pre-snap reads? This is something that Kate McNamara really was proficient at last year, but how accurate are his pre-snap reads? And then once... The ball is snapped. Is he able to go through his first, second, third, and check down appropriately? How comfortable is he doing that? And how often, how consistent is he doing that, right? Um, And number two here, is he willing to throw the ball away, right? Sometimes there is no way out. Sometimes a blitz or sometimes the defensive coverage just wins the play. And you have to live to see another day. Sometimes that results in a punt, and that's a bummer, but that's okay. Is he forcing the ball in those situations? Is he always looking for a way out you know his escapability is a real plus but sometimes when there's people barreling down on you and there is no escape you have to throw the ball away live to see another drive live to see another down and him being smart with the football in that way would show great growth from last year Cade McNamara here what are things that he can do to really show me that he can be the longtime leader of this season number one can he extend the play right we know that JJ has the ability to use his legs extremely well when a play breaks down McNamara is generally excellent at avoiding sacks did really well last year on that but can he extend the play right when there's a gap that he can wiggle out of and uh, extend the play work outside the pocket use his legs effectively can he do that or does he always you know give it up and throw it out of bounds. If he can show that ability to work off script a bit more, be a little bit more comfortable in finding those options once you get past your initial reads and nothing's there, those situations are something where he could help close the gap on JJ in that regard of off script plays. Um, And then number two, can he use his legs on designed reads, right? So many plays that look to be a read on the defensive end that the quarterback is reading on whether to give to the running back or keep to the outside, he often gave those away, and it usually looked to be the wrong read in those scenarios. If he wants to be a more dynamic member of the offense that J.J. McCarthy is pushing, right? That's a big reason J.J. McCarthy is pushing the position here. Kate McNamara needs to improve there, and it's really going to – I'm really going to be looking close there to see if there's any improvement in those specific reads because everything else that I've seen from Kate McNamara, extremely proficient, but not in this area, and I want to see some growth there. Um, I'm excited to see how both – QBs will play in each game. I'm excited that we get to see them in each game so we can see how they perform against the same defenses, right? It's not just Colorado State for one guy, Hawaii for the other guy. You need to see them against a common opponent, and hopefully that's what we'll see. I think this is only a good thing. Again, if anyone's saying it's a negative thing, I feel like they're trying to find something to complain about. Okay, final part here, mustache talk. I got a lot to say, people. Number one here, this kind fellow in the comments, I'll pull it up on the screen here, he said you would give me a kidney, all right? And that, I'll just get to the point, he said the mustache wasn't it, all right? It's about as delicate of a way to say, hey man, maybe a mustache isn't for you. I respect that, so I appreciate your comment. Number two here, Maddie took a bit more of a blunt approach, um, says that she could not listen to me, um, questioning what was on my face, and uh, that's noted. You know, both both ways of saying the same thing. Um, shout out to 313 Hockey, though. Red Wings podcast, Maddie is a host of, worth a listen, but I don't appreciate the mustache slander. Meanwhile, our fearless leader here at Maze Blue Review, Josh, showed off his glorious mustache, and now I feel bad for not keeping it in solidarity with you, Josh. I know Brandon Justice of Maze Blue Review team as well is rocking a stash, so I'm feeling a little left out now. If you comment, I may bring up your tweet, I may promote your podcast, I may be sad about you judging my mustache but that's just part of the game here i'll have a poll at steven toski as well to see if the mustache should make a return go to twitter vote let me know your thoughts and we'll go from there okay beyond that throw a like and subscription to the channel if you haven't already we're growing pretty well and there's a lot more content to come this week and into the season thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this video stay safe out there and as always go blue